The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Hello, Lobo fans. Welcome on set of your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm your host, Rob Reportnoy, with head football coach at the University of New Mexico, Danny Gonzalez. Coach G, first off, congratulations. Thank you. You win your first Rio Grande rivalry matchup as head coach. Um, what about your team's performance? You know, I was proud of them. I mean, it's a, it's a rivalry game. There was a lot of emotion. Um, I thought they played through some of it. We still had some dumb penalties that we need to correct. But ultimately, we came out on top, so it was a good night for the Lobos. Lobos win by nine in a game that you felt like you could have won by more, but you thought that New Mexico State's performance was pretty impressive? I thought they played hard. I thought Coach Martin had them ready to play. They made a bunch of big plays. I mean, the, the three fourth down stops, uh, the big play right at the end of the first half for the 75-yard touchdown. I mean, all those things combined kept them close. Uh, we made too many mistakes early. We got up again 14-3, to and we didn't keep our foot on the gas. 34-25 is the final. Uh, you've now beaten New Mexico State three straight times, and you guys also have a four-game winning streak. Uh, final two last year, first two this year, that hadn't been done in quite some time. Actually, go back to 2016. 2016 and 2004 before that. Uh, Frank does a great job giving me all them numbers. I mean, we have the eighth longest winning streak in the country right now, tied for it. That's pretty far turnaround from the, 14, from the longest losing streak in the nation that we owned for about three hours back before the Wyoming game. So good things are happening around here. It's good. Another thing that I was surprised to learn as well, as many opportunities recently as the Lobos have uh, had to win two in a row at the start of the season. That hadn't happened since 2005. It's a long time. Those are the losing habits that we talk about. We need to change around here, so we're headed in the right direction. Headed in the right direction, and the offense showed such great balance in this game. Coach, I know you love how they run the ball um, it, because it wasn't the way you wanted it in the first game, right? No, I, it, we got out physical. Um, I thought Terry and the boys up front did a great job. I mean, that 385 yards passing is a career best for him. That's the, first, that's the first time since 2003 around here. That's a long time for that, too. Yeah, incredible. Terry Wilson, of course, is the Mountain West Offensive Player of the Week. Um, you guys have a special quarterback. He's really good. I mean, he's played really well the first two weeks. We need to find a way to keep him healthy, and uh, our offensive line has done a great job with that so far, and if he keeps doing that, then good things will keep happening for the Lobos. And Lobo fans shouldn't be surprised that Terry Wilson is performing the way he is. He had, uh, of course, a ton of experience in the SEC. Uh, we'll talk about this more, but... Uh, the fact that he's already gone to Kyle Field and played a game against A&M and taken the Aggies to overtime, he's not going to be phased by that. No, and, and he'll be able to get our guys ready. I mean, um, we're going out there trying to win the football game, and we're going to give it our best shot. Your defense turned over the opponent again this week. Uh, two crucial interceptions. Cody Moon was spectacular. Your all-conference performer, Jarek Reed, had a pick. Uh, what about their performance? Both big-time plays at, at big opportunities. The one for Cody Moon was right after we had just given them the ball. And then Jarek in the second half late. Uh, I mean, and it was a great catch, too. I mean, both of them. Cody's was a physical play because he made the tackle that caused the ball to come out, and he was able to find it. And Jarek just made a spectacular play on the ball. Yeah, the play that Cody Moon made, it happened in such close quarters. Very difficult for us to see from upstairs what happened in real time. And the receiver comes down with the ball. Cody rips it out as they're going down, and it pops up in the air, and he's smart enough to grab it. It did. It was laying on his chest, and, and I think he was surprised. I mean, he was kind of fumbling with it, and then he held it up. I mean, it was, it was a great deal. You know, you've gotten off to fast starts in each of your first two games, and I know that you'd love to sort of keep the pedal down and be able to pull away. That hasn't happened. Um, to what do you attribute that? Mistakes. Assignment errors. As a team, we had 36 of them, and that's way too many to be successful. And then, I mean, we're killing ourselves, whether it's dumb penalties, uh, dead ball penalties. When the ball is not moving and you get a penalty, whether you jump off sides, false start, uh, those kind of things, they just eliminate drives and they kill you. And we're doing that way too often. One of the things that Coach Gonzalez preaches is play with passion, but don't play with emotion. Got to be under control. And again, personal foul penalties bit you guys. Two of them. I mean, the one on uh, Ray Lutelli on special teams, it just can't happen. That, that's selfish as a teammate. And then Langston, in today's game, you just can't hit the quarterback like that. I mean, you can't take two steps and push him. If you'd have hit him and tackled him, probably wouldn't have called it. But anytime you push quarterback, they're going to throw the flag. You know, there's a key play uh, where you guys are called for grounding in the end zone. They get a safety. Uh, I know Terry was clearly outside the tackle box when he released it. Did the ball get back to the line of scrimmage? I don't think it did. Uh, you can see it, 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 it flutters up and it goes out of play. And on our uh, video, you can see it land by the cheerleaders. It's close, but when it's that close, they probably should call it a safety. At that point in the game, it's definitely a coin flip. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 24-22. Now we have to kick off and give them the ball back. Uh, I mean, it, it was 
give them credit. They kept it close. All right, we're going to check out first half highlights. The Lobos win over New Mexico State next. The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back on your Lobo Coaches Show with the head football coach at UNM, Danny Gonzalez. I'm Robert Portnoy. Coach, it's time to get into first half highlights. The Lobos knock off New Mexico State in the Rio Grande rivalry. You know, with 9-11, with, uh, we, we honored them. We had an American flag run out. We had our New Mexico flag as always. And, and the crowd was just awesome to start the game and, and throughout the whole game. And then we throw the very first play of the game. I mean, Terry throws it over the top. And we got two choices between Zarek and uh, Luke. And what a big catch. And too bad it wasn't a touchdown, but he put the ball right on the money. God, what a throw. And there's another guy who comes to the University of New Mexico as a walk-on, Zarek Scruggs, who's producing for you on the field. He's doing a great job. I mean, he's fast. He can take it over the top, as you saw right there. And then this is the Bobby Cole that, that I was looking forward to see. I mean, what a great run. He had multiple runs like that all night long. A 100-yard rusher, a 100-yard receiver, a 300-yard passer. Talk about balance in the offense. That's what we're talking about. And if we can get a one-on-one -on -one like that, Bobby's going to win those most of the time. So the guys up front obviously did a good job of taking care of everybody else. He's so physical, Bobby Cole. And I love the, the you know balance you have in your backfield this year. Now that is very uncharacteristic of Kyle Stapley. Very. I mean, he was he was surprised when he came over the sideline. He asked how high it was. Great play by Cade Briggs, though, to get on top of that to keep the ball. I mean, we put it on the ground three times and didn't lose any of them. I thought we did a good job on the perimeter on defense other than the one play that they took for a touchdown. And we were getting pressure on the quarterback. And then what a great catch by uh, Trace Bruckler right there. I thought he was going to get his head taken off, but didn't worry about it. He just went up and caught the ball and made a big time play. Uh, Terry Wilson throws the seam route so well, Coach. He, he puts air under it when it's needed. He can throw it uh, like a dart when he has to. Uh, and you're right, the defender just runs right by Trace. He does, and, and you know what? The, both the quarterback and the receiver are reading coverages right there. So a great job of executing. And then how about this, our boy Connor Woodoff. I mean, he does a lot of blocking. He, he do, does a really good job being physical, and he finally got a little bit of credit in his name in the paper for a touchdown. Yeah, his first catch, and he takes it to Pater. He's got to be physical there at the finish to get it across the line. No, just like Bobby. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't going to be denied. And look at those guys out in front. I mean, that's a great job of blocking and taking care of the white shirts, and there goes Connor. Yeah, he had a little convoy with him as he was headed toward the pylon. Now here, this was a great play by Devin. I about lost my mind when you see the flag come out right here. Now the referee said he was throwing it for safety and they've got to review it. And upstairs, they did, a, they did the right thing because this is a textbook play. I mean, this is, I say it all the time, they're, they're changing the game, the way you play it. And they're almost to the point where we have to stand there, let him catch it and then try and tackle him. And, and I refuse to let that happen. So it was a good job by Devin right there and the referees got it right. So initially it was a targeting and they took it off. They did. And then things like that. I mean, because uh, they had to drop the ball over the middle right there because they're afraid of getting hit. I mean, it's a, it's a good deal. What a great third down run here by Terry. I thought he kept some plays alive with his legs and did a great job with that on the night too. Did you feel like he was a little bit quicker on his feet in this game than in the opener? You can see right here on this cut, he, he had a little bit more stability in his legs. So I thought he, yeah, I think he looked, I thought he looked better. We got to fix this though. Uh, Andrew's first two attempts were not very good. They were, I mean, not only were they not good, but they weren't good kicks at all. And we were able to sell him down the sideline to get the 47 yarder later, uh, but we got to fix that. Now up front on defense, I thought we did a great job of getting pressure on the quarterbacks. We didn't have any sacks, but we were hitting them all night long and they did a great job uh, of getting pressure on the quarterback to make those throws hard. And there's a beautiful throw to Andrew Erickson, and Erickson had a terrific game. He did. He, he played like we expect him to play. I mean, the two the two catches he had, he's going to have a fourth down touchdown here in a minute. And then I thought Aaron Dumas, just like we talked about, he improved dramatically. And then Chad Alexander right there, he did a really good job of knifing through holes. And as you talked about the first couple of kicks from Andrew, not what you'd like, but he did come back and nail his last two, which ended up both being very important. He did. You know, I played some mind games with him on, before that last one. I'm not taking credit. He's the one that goes out there and kicks it, but we're trying to change things up. Now, they did a great job right here. This was a, this was a mistake. I mean, right here, you, you just can't do this, what Langston does right there. You, I mean, that, you just got to avoid him. They're going to call it. And then Jared Reed right there, dirty eyes, we called. He looked in the backfield to see where it was. That's, that's a route that he can cover over and over. And, we just need to execute that. And then this is a great, very imaginative play right here by New Mexico State. Uh, I mean, the double pass, it's, it's close whether or not he was out, in, in, out. I mean, but ultimately they looked on the tape and decided it was good. Now, this is one of the things I know uh, in this contest, uh, three separate occasions, you want to improve on the short yardage. Oh, give New Mexico State the credit. They whooped our tail up front. They stonewalled us on th all three of those fourth and shorts. 
great play right here by Cody Moon. This is one we talked about earlier. Uh, he makes the tackle, it's physical, he pulls the ball out, and see, I'm, look right here, he's kind of surprised it's on his chest. Watch this, it's awesome. <laughs> Rolls right over on top yeah, of the he, numbers. Yeah, I mean, held it up, and it was like, is it mine? I mean, this, this, what a great play. Just a good physical tackle. You can see the ball is loose the whole time. The receiver never had it. That was my concern is the receiver might have possession and been down, but not the case. And that's a great job by Cody Moon right there to keep it off the ground. Cody Moon plays with his hair on fire too, doesn't he? He does. He plays just like we want him to. Great fourth down play right here. Great throw by Terry. I mean, that was an outstanding pass. And then there's Andrew coming up with a big catch on fourth and fourth and two right down there in the red zone. Coach, I'm telling you, that's the throw that you see on Sundays. That's 35 yards in the air, backpedaling off of his back foot. Not too many guys can make that throw. You know, if you watch the stadium broadcast, they called uh, Andrew right there a little Gronk. I mean, up close maybe he looks like him, but Gronk's <laughs> like 6'7". So. But uh, hey, if he can get the production 87 gets, then, then we'll take it. Call him whatever you want. Oh, and I know Terry is loving it, getting to throw it like he is. He came here to throw the football. He got to throw 37 of them in the game. He did. Now, here's the right at the end of the second half. After we scored a touchdown, we give it right back to him, give them a chance to stay in the game. Now, uh, Costanera Garcia was fast, and he proved it right there. We didn't do a good enough job of, of capitalizing in coverage and getting him on the ground. And then I thought Terry and the boys did a great job of, uh, it almost sounds like a band, doesn't it? Terry and the boys <laughs> did a great job of moving the ball down there and getting in field goal range. And then Andrew finally came through. Absolute money here. Right at the end of the half, a terrific kick and a deep one. It was 47 yards. I um, mean, he's got leg strength. Uh, we just need to get a little more consistent where he's placing it. And it becomes, it's, it's um, kickers like free throw shooters. I mean, you can't place it. You just have to do your technique, swing through and put it through the pipes. I got to give you props. Those helmets, so sweet. The old school profile wolf with the stars and stripes down the you middle. You know that obviously 9-11 is an important day for our country. Uh, we got to remember the heroes that ran into that building to try and save the others when we got attacked by terrorists. And any way we can honor them, I mean, we'll do it. It's a little significant thing, but there's people out there that don't have dads and don't have brothers anymore. And so to give them just a little bit of remembrance. And then I, I, the, the old school level, that's what I played in. So, I mean, we're trying to bring some traditions back around here, and it was a good opportunity. All right, the Lobos have a one-score lead at the half. We come back with second half highlights after this. The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Back on your Lobo Coaches Show with the head football coach at New Mexico, Danny Gonzalez. I'm Robert Portnoy. Coach, you have a 24 to 20 lead at the break. Let's take a peek at second half highlights. They came out, I mean, this is a big time stop right here on third down. I mean, that, that was a really good job by the guys up front, not allowing them to get penetration. And then the secondary was able to get him on the ground. Uh, this one, I mean, Terry's got to get that ball past the line of scrimmage. You can see it lands right there by the cheerleaders. And it's, it's pretty even with the line, but if it's that close, they should call it a safety. If we were on the other side of the ball, I'd be wanting it to be a safety too. I thought he did a great job getting outside the tackle box, and I thought it was no problem, but uh, you can't make it close. Now, this one that they did a couple of times getting the ball pinned back there, and we did a lot better job on offense of running the ball out of there and giving us some breathing room. Now, this there's one this one we take uh, the entire way and score a touchdown off of the three-yard line, but you at least want to get two first downs so you can punt the ball with some breathing room. Yeah, you got pinned inside the five a couple times in week one and couldn't get off the goal line, but you were able to in this contest. We were, and last week it cost us a touchdown on a punt return. Uh, and this time we turn it into a touchdown. But there's Bobby Cole again in the open field. I mean, anytime it's one-on-one, -on -one, he may not get a whole lot of extra yards, but that guy is going down. This looks like the Bobby Cole that finished off last season with back-to-back -back career highs in rushing yards and your two wins against Wyoming and Fresno State. Here's another Simon error right there. I mean, Bobby Cole, look what he does to the nose guard. Now the nose guard practically took a handoff from Terry. So we got to do a better job of not missing assignments and missing those guys. Great job again here by Cody Moon getting his hands up on the pass rush. Uh, six foot four, only about 200 pounds. We can put some weight on him. He's got a chance to be like somebody around here named Nick Spiegel, who was a pretty good player for the Lobos. You can see Cody's length. It makes him a dangerous player. It really does. I mean, he's got long arms, he's physical, and he plays, like you said, with his hair on fire, like you said earlier. So once again, um, you guys do really nice job uh, in the return game. You know, Manny Logan Green's doing a, a lot of really good things. I was disappointed in the one late in the second half where he let the ball hit the ground, and I keep addressing that with him. But you've got to, I mean, he does things like this that are dynamic. Now, the disappointing thing here is we sit the ball at the eight yard line, and we don't put it in the end zone. I mean, we, we have to finish those. That's just silly. Put the ball in the eight yard line, you got to get it in the end zone. 
Yeah, too many field goal attempts in this game. You want to finish off drives. There were. Now, that was a great job by Jared Long right there, our holder. And I think that's the most unappreciated position of all football. I mean, the only time they know about the holders is when he screws up. Now, their kicking game, they did a great job with field goals. Uh, I mean, they have, he's got great distance, and, and they executed all night long. Another beautiful throw by Terry Wilson. And when he has somebody open downfield, he doesn't miss. He doesn't. And it's, a, it's one of those deals where we were running the ball really well in the second half. The play action helped, and we sent him over the top. And then there's Manny Logan Green with his first career touchdown as a Lobo. I can't believe that. It's his senior year, and he finally got one. Uh, I was proud of him, happy for him, and what a great throw by Terry. And you could see what it meant to him. Uh, amazing, you're right, as many balls as he's caught, but that was his first TD. You know, uh, Manny is very outspoken about his faith, and I love that. He was very appreciative of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and, and it gives him a lot of credit, which you should. What a great play here by Luke Weissong, the true freshman. Uh, I mean, Terry threw the ball up there. We've got some guys that are not afraid to go and get it. Um, Keontae made one like that earlier. Uh, Trace Bruckler in the first half we watched, and Luke Weissong right there. I mean, that, that's big time for that room. Unbelievable confidence on the part of Terry to throw it up there, too. And, and again, Weissong taking a hit. He's a physical player. You know, when, when the quarterback has confidence that those guys are going to go up and get the ball, he's not afraid to throw it. Now, this was a really good drive here in the fourth quarter. I mean, it was 15 plays, 73 yards up until the fourth down. We've got, I mean, I thought Bobby scored right there. It looked like he did. Now, if he fumbled it and had to recover it, then good, penalize him. Don't let him give him the touchdown. But I thought he was in. And then we, I told uh, Coach Warheim, I mean, really, I was telling our sideline, look guys, we are trying to set a culture here. Put the ball in the end zone. Put the ball in the end zone. And we got out physical. So the fourth downs were disappointing. You got to cut that guy off. I mean, if you just cut him, we're going to have a chance for Bobby Cole to run over somebody, but give the boys down south credit. They kept the, they kept themselves a chance in the game, and they kept us out of the end zone on three opportunities. Frustrating that they're able to get the penetration like they did in short yardage. Assignment mistakes. All assignment mistakes, and when you do that, it kills you. Now, this was a great play. Right after the fourth down stop, Jared Green on a deep ball, they took a shot to try and get back in the game, and he adjusted the ball in the air and made an outstanding play. And then this was a good way to finish it. I mean, kept them in bounds. Uh, Cy Riley right there did a great job. The receivers, they had a couple balls over the middle. We had uh, got enough uh, pressure on the quarterback and the, those guys were looking for the guys to come and tackle them. So that's a positive. I mean, we played physical on defense. We gave up the big pass, which is disappointing because we hadn't done that yet this year. And uh, all we're doing is inviting people to throw it on us. And that was a communication error also. Uh, the corners got to get a little bit more physical hands on the receiver. And then we got to play that better. Quickly, before we break, you mentioned Cy Riley. Uh, with Rico Hanna dinged up, your linebacking core stepped up. You know, Rico's going to be out for the season. Uh, we're going to fix him. He'll get another year, which will be good for the Lobos next year. But Cy Riley, Cody Moon, uh, Devin Sanders, those guys all stepped up and played pretty well. And, and I think we'll be okay at linebacker with Dion and Ray in the middle and those three rotating on the outside. We've still got enough depth there. All right, time for a break. 34-25, Lobos beat the Aggies. A different Aggie, a Texas A&M Aggie hosting UNM next week. We preview that game next. The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. We're back to wrap up this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show with Danny Gonzalez, the head football coach at UNM. I'm Robert Portnoy and Coach G. What an opportunity for your team now coming off the win over New Mexico State. You're going to take your team into Kyle Field and College Station to take on Texas A&M. Unbelievable environment. There'll be 102,000 people there. Uh, we've, we played Texas A&M four times in the history of our program. You go all the way back to 1926 for the first one. Now it was a, a whooping, a 63 nothing whooping. And then Coach Long, when we were here before, he got a home and home with Texas A&M, and they came to Albuquerque first in 2008. And we lose 28-22, but we had numerous chances to win that game. Uh, they had a great running back by the name of Javorski Lane, who was a big old guy. I asked their team yesterday if they knew who he was, none of them did. Which makes me feel a little bit old. It was only in 2008 that that happened. And then in 09, we go up there and lose 55-14. And uh, 2017, we went up there and it wasn't close either. So we've got a great opportunity to go up there and compete and put our throw the ball out there and see what happens. I think it's fascinating. The last time the Lobos were there, 2017, the quarterback was Nick Starkle. He ends up helping San Jose State win a conference championship in the Mountain West last year. Now you have an SEC quarterback from Kentucky who's calling signals for you, Terry Wilson. He's going a place he's very familiar with. He almost beat Texas A&M in A&M as their quarterback, took them all the way to overtime. Pretty comforting to have that guy calling the signals. You know, he'll be able to tell our guys what it's going to be about. He'll be able to give them some experiences. Now, 
when that kickoff first happens, all that's out the window. But it's nice that he has that experience and we can help with preparation during the week. And the goal, obviously, looking back on the 2017 game, you want your Lobos to go in this time and be more competitive. And if you can do that up front, the farther along into the game that you do that, all of a sudden doubt starts to creep in for Texas A&M. There's no doubt. I mean, in 2007, nobody thought Appalachian State was going to beat Michigan. And they now, Appalachian State was two-time defending FCS champion at that time, but Michigan was ranked fifth in the country. So why not us? Why not us? And I know you're a little dinged up on the offensive line now, too, but uh, you had a young man come off the bench and do something really remarkable last weekend. You know, uh, Ratchin Jane came off. He's 22 days out of surgery, uh, filled in at right tackle when Jacob Jankowiak went down. Um, that's, I mean, he has the heart of a champion I mean, the heart of a lion. I mean, he's one of the toughest kids on our team. He's what we preach. We want to be the toughest team in this league, and to be able to do that was really impressive. Oh, we've got just about 30 seconds left. Uh, if there were a key or two for the Lobos to have a chance in the fourth quarter against AM, and what would it be? Well, we have to be able to run the football. Um, there's no doubt. I mean, they're, they're bigger than us up front. Um, that's expected. I mean, they're an SEC program, and SEC has a lot of uh, great claim to be in the best league in this country with what they've done in the CFP. Uh, we, have, we can't give up big plays on defense. We have to get pressure on the quarterback. And we've got to perform well in special teams. If we can perform well on special teams in the return game and not give up big returns, we hopefully we'll give ourselves a chance. All right. Well, we know they're top five ranked. It's going to be a lot of fun, Coach. Oh, it's going to be outstanding. I mean, th this is what we want. We talk about it. We're going to build something special around here. So let's go throw our hat in the ring. Lobos and Aggies next weekend. Go Lobos. Go Lobos.